This program is brought to you by Emory University. What would you take with you into the woods if you thought you might get lost? A lighter, a compass, a knife. You don't have a knife because there's nothing in nature that you can pick up that's sharp that you can cut with. You can make a stone tool though if you know how and then you have your knife. There you go. Tools uh, and stone tool making seem like this really obscure kind of esoteric thing but um, in fact for the past two million years, it's probably been the most common and consistent human technology done by virtually every society around the entire world. So if you want to think of a typically human behavior, stone tool making is it. Uh, so as archaeologists, when we want to study the evolution of intelligence or the evolution of the mind, we want to know what our ancient ancestors did. Uh, and the best evidence that's left to us of that is in the form of ancient stone tools, which actually preserve pretty detailed aspects of behavior. Take, for example, the very earliest known stone tools uh, from the, the old one industry that go back something like 2.6 million years. Uh, simple stone flakes struck from river cobbles. Uh, not much to look at, but in fact they have sharp edges, effective enough to use in butchering an animal like an elephant. Now you may ask, how is it that archaeologists know these things about these ancient tools, about how they were made, what they could have been used for? And the answer is that we've done it ourselves. And that's experimental archaeology. One of the best ways to figure out how artifacts were made and how they might have been used is to try to do it yourself. Uh, and that's a very big part of the research that I do. And it allows us to understand changes in behavior associated with changes in the archaeological record. For instance, when these very early stone tools from the old one were replaced by more sophisticated forms, like this hand axe, it was characteristic of a period we call the late Acheulean. And you can already see that there's a much greater degree of design, there's a symmetry, there's an intention you can see. And from trying to make these axes, in fact this is one that I made, you learn that it's not easy to do. There's a lot of skill that goes into it and a lot of knowledge and a lot of decisions that you have to make. And this provides us evidence of evolving intelligence, evidence of evolving mind. Uh, of course, language is recognized as maybe the most important distinctive characteristic of modern humans uh, that results in a lot of our complex behavior and intelligence, our ability to communicate. Uh, and for a long time, people have wondered whether these ancient stone tools might tell us anything about the evolution of that capacity. Uh, at first glance, it doesn't seem like a natural relationship, a lump of rock, a sentence, what do they have in common? Uh, but in fact, using brain imaging technologies, we find that the parts of the brain involved in coordinating the complex behavioral sequences involved in making a stone tool actually overlap with the parts of the brain that are involved in the complex sequences that go into putting together a sentence. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.